cornerstones, our chief cornerstone. No other foundation can we build upon. Nothing lies a nor the wisdom of man, all of the ground. Is it sad? Oh, yes. Upon this rock, you build your church. That's right. And the gates of hell will not prevail. When we bind and lose, hey, we you. proclaim yeah. your truth. And in Jesus' name, we will not fail, never Build it from the ground up, 
It's your church. Build your church. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. We're your church. Yes. Build your church. Yes. Build your church. Build it from the ground. Yes. Up. It's your church. Hallelujah. Your church. Yes. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. Build your church. the Lord. In his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pledges forevermore. We bless the Lord. We honor him. We magnify him. We give him all praise. More than what we think we even can do. We just can do a little. Just a little. We try to do as much as we can. But we never look on it and say it's my best. Amen. Our mission statement together. We endeavor to love, obey, and serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, striving always to fulfill our purpose, making disciples of all men for the advancing of the kingdom of God on earth under the direction of the Holy Ghost. You can be seated. I 
I want to take this moment to bring greetings to everyone, the wonderful uh, people of God, to be here in the house of the Lord, to be in the presence of God. As the writer said, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, and now we don't fully understand that, <laughs> At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I think there is a song that said, take your burden to the Lord. And he said, leave it there. None of us are designed to carry a load or to carry burden. As child of God, we give it to the Lord. Yes. Amen. So I just want to greet everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. want to greet the fine ministry of this local church. Greetings to you all. want to greet those who view us online and who stay with us throughout the past uh, few years since we've been streaming live online. We are happy for you. We are glad you are a part of us. And we thank God for you. Amen. 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 Today we are here in the presence of the Lord. And I think when we gather like this, it's not a regular settings. I don't see any knives and forks and cup and glass and plates and tables set nicely to eat naturally. But when we come, we come to eat spiritual food. Amen? Amen. I've been praying and asking the Lord what to do today. I've been seeking God for a little bit for what will be relevant, pertinent for this time as it relates to God's move among us as his people. He dropped within me a word from the scriptures, just a word, just a thought. And the thought this morning is forgiveness. Forgiveness and then forgive. Forgive and then forgiveness. But that's where he brings me today. And I don't see any way possible that I can remove myself from this. This is what he wants today. And I'm here to deliver by his grace and mercy. God already provided his word before you even had trouble and trial. So don't worry about that. Amen. It may just fit in. But God already have that before you even were born. So don't worry about that. Just take it and help yourself today. I didn't come to speak to anybody personal. I come to deliver what the Lord gave me. Amen. Let's look to the word of the Lord from St. Matthew chapter 6. St. Matthew chapter 6. There are other passages that deals with forgiveness. But let me see what our Lord talked to Peter about. Peter talked to the Lord about this thing. And see what is the, our Lord response to Peter. Amen. St. Matthew chapter 6. Sister Margaret, would you mind read for us? We have your Bible there. You. Um, we'll be looking at the 12th verse through the 15th. Pretty short. St. Matthew chapter 6. If you can stand, please, in reading the word of the Lord. St. 
verses 12 through the what verse? 16. 16 and, and 17. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The word is already blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God. We bless the Lord today. Want to encourage us today, sisters and brothers, from the Word of God. I want to use for a little subject, a little theme, the power of forgiveness. And it has to be that way the power of forgiveness. Amen. That when we forgive, when you have the heart of forgiveness, it brings freedom liberation. You're free, you feel good. Amen. When you can clear the air, as somebody said, clear the air. But it's more than clearing the air because it has to do with the individual, the person that been living with unforgiveness. Amen. The word of God is here to set us straight. And for us to live by the word, apply the word to our daily lives. If we are a child of God, then we have a direction. We have a mandate that we have to follow the guideline of God's word. Amen. And for the better part, we have to do what it says. Amen. You cannot be a child of God and then you fight against the word. How can you do that? The word must come within. And when the word comes within, the word brings changes. Amen. We must follow the guidelines of God's word. And we must do what the word tells us to do. There is no middle ground. There is no other way around that or away from that. Amen. But we must learn and understand that we must exercise a heart of forgiveness. And the Lord is going to show to us today. Remind us how that can be done. Amen. Matthew 6. Here we find our Lord open to us the word about forgive. And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And he said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. The 14 verse says, for if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you. What a freedom. What a, a, a Pressure. What a attention that release. When you release yourself in forgiveness, you have a joyful heart. And then when you do that, the, the fruit of the spirit can connect well. You can live out the fruit of the spirit without hesitation, without bucking and stopping and wonder why and what this is. But you've got to free, free yourself from this. Question arise. And this is one of the questions that I, I think of. I jot it down. Why should we forgive? Amen. 
Does the Bible talk about forgiveness? That's to us. How can I extend forgiveness to those who sin against us? We pray regarding forgiveness, forgiving someone who we has hurt. The person hurt you. And your holy person. These things are common among us as human beings. These things happen. It happened to me too. Well, you're looking at me. Amen. We pray regarding forgiveness. Forgiving someone who has hurt us is often not easy. You don't have to put your hand up there and say, I can preach to her that one, two, three. No. It's a process. But the process is not supposed to be a delay process. It's supposed to be an on-time process that when you recognize that you still hold someone. Amen. Because the Spirit of God will speak to your heart, you know. And when the Spirit starts to deal with you, then you cannot be contrary. You have to submit and comply to the standard of God's Word. And what the Word stands for that you will say to yourself, I have to speak to this person because I hold this person too long. When you don't exercise a heart of forgiveness, your spiritual life becomes crippled. And I would use a regular term, dwarf. When you don't release yourself, as a child of God in forgiving someone, your devotion become worth nothing. Because church, there is a hindrance to your devotion. There is something blocking your breakthrough. Amen. Amen. You still can pray. You still can worship. But there is something blocking. There is a hindrance to your breakthrough. And until when you rise up to that potential and said, yes, I have to release myself. Do you see how powerful this is? If you don't exercise forgiveness, you will wrap up until Jesus come and you'll never get it done. But we need to check ourselves and see if there's anything or anyone that I'm holding. Because sometimes people hold each other for two days, three days, one year, ten years. And we still skip and jump and cry out and hallelujah and everything still works. Because God not shutting you down. You will shut yourself down. Amen. Your devotion can still show on a height of a, a, a good level. But the fact of the matter is that you're still lacking something. You wonder why I just cannot get the breakthrough that I really desire. You're blocking your progress. Your spiritual heritage is under attack. This is not a word for us to sit back and relax and, and say, yes, this is easy. It's not an easy street with this. This is a challenge. Amen. And church, you have to count the cost. Amen. 
You have to examine yourself and to see if this thing is hindering or holding me back. We need God's power to release us. Oh Lord. Release us from bitterness or grudge. Because these things set up by the enemy. Bitterness and grudge does not come from God. It does not build a Christian life. It tear down a Christian life that we might hold against them. Remember the forgiveness God has given to you. When we remember the many sins, God has forgiven us. Oh God. None of us didn't born a Christian. None of us didn't born righteous. And you know the scriptures already. You know what it says. That we were all born in a condition. Compromising condition. My God in heaven. But it takes God to forgive. Look on how he forgive us. Some of us we were in the rudiment of sin. We were in some bad condition. Some ugly ways about us. But since Jesus came and we recognize that he forgave. That we could come with our bundle. We have a lot of bundles, you know. Sinful bundle. We were at the wreckage. Some of us was at our waist end. But it takes an extraordinary God to look down on us. That's why Jesus said when he come, he looked beyond our fault and he saw our need. We had such a great need that water and soap could not have washed it away. It takes the blood of Jesus to cleanse me and to wash me. That I could put away the evil of my doing. So he forgive. So when we get saved and become a child of God. Automatically. We must forgive each other. Peter came to Jesus. With a smart statement I call it. I'm paraphrasing. He said well. How often should I forgive my brother? Seven times? But Jesus extended beyond that and said, no, Peter, I'm going to give you an amnesty. Let me put it to that level. I'm going to free you beyond that seven time. I'm going to go to 70 time. You know it, right? You read it before. But practice it. Practice it. You have enough time to make it right. Not seven times because church, look on us as human beings. We are not easy to get along with. You don't like that. We are hard and at times we become stubborn. That's why Paul said the good I want to do. <laughs> what Romans 7? The good that I wanted to do. I didn't do it. But the evil that I hate, that's what presents itself. And I strongly believe that Paul was one of us. Human being, he never dropped from the sky. He lived in this life and he did live a wayward lifestyle. 
until Jesus stopped him. So Paul knew about sin and so many other things. But he said, oh, wretched. People of God, we inherit some things. We are inherit some bad things. That's why it takes the blood to wash us. Because the way how we came into this life, we came with sin. Do you hear me? So for, for us to operate better, more conscious, we would have to ask our Savior to wash us in his blood. That when we are washed, we are different. <laughs> We talk different. We operate different. We live different. We talk different. We look different. Things I used to do, I do them no more. Amen. And the list goes on. So the blood would have to wash us to bring us to consciousness of ourselves to realize that there is a God to serve. Because anything Satan have, it never lasts long. But listen, it look good. You agree with me? I hear you. It look good. Does it taste good? You don't want to talk. But I know Satan's presentation is the best. But when you comply to it, you realize that there is a broken stuff behind you. There is no strength and there is nothing good about it. When you identify it, when you split it and examine it, you say, no, this is not for me. But the presentation trick you. And you buy into it. And then it destroy you. And then you live with it. And then that unforgiveness that you should come in and talk to your mama or your dad or your aunt and said, it's 10 years. I wonder some folks in churches, they cannot soar to heights. Every time they get to go a little height, they come down. Because there is something on the inside that is not of God, that have not yet been dealt with. I love the person that see here herself and come and talk to you and said, I'm sorry. That's a real person. But the one who hurt, you have never said it. But try to mix in the crowd and try to operate in the realm of a spirit. Watch that one. But the one that come and will even tears will broke and said, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Come on, man. You have to upset that one. Sometimes people don't even realize and know who they hurt. But many of us hurt so much people among us. And many hurt you too. But don't sit with it. Because it's dangerous. It's not healthy. It will cause you to go to the doctor. It will give you high blood pressure. It will seek you. Physically. I wonder if you understand me today. Forgive that you can be forgiven when the person says, yes, I forgive you, then you are liberated. You can't come around praying for people and laying hands and you have unforgiveness. It doesn't work like that. 
everything you're going to do in the spiritual realm, it's going to bounce back at you. And when it bounces back at you, you become problem in the arena. Nothing never done right. <laughs> Listen to me, church. If I don't tell you what God says, then it wouldn't make sense for me to stand here. I would have rather sit down there. But God wants us to move on to a better path. Amen. We want when we teach, when we preach, when we sing, it is coming from a heart that is already sanctified for the master's use. Nothing should hinder a heart that have forgiveness. Remember, in my statement earlier, I said it's not easy. I'm not going to tell you something that you can easily run to and, and, and just chop it up and get it done. It must be done in the right order. Because God is in this thing. If you need your ministry to soar to heights, you need to go check somebody whom you already have tied up. Release yourself and release the person. Otherwise, no ministry excel. A wonderful way to forgive someone who has hurt you is to focus your life on a, on a simple word. Loving and serving others. Love covers. What it covers? You see, you know scriptures. Love covers a multitude. Who knows what a multitude is? Amen. Good. So if you know that, then that should be an easy task to practice. Because the love in your heart is God's love. <laughs> it's not yours. You don't have none. You hear me? It is God's love. The love of God that shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. God's love. And when that love is there, then it will teach you to love your enemy. Yes. And you will love them without even bucking, edging, wandering. You just love them. Because everybody have an enemy. You don't believe that? Yes, man. Everybody have an enemy. Because Satan is still alive. And he's moving on the waves. This morning you come to church and he want to come with you. <laughs> Look at that. You're quiet. <laughs> As you open your door, Satan says, let me step in first. You don't know that? Yes, he do. But when you have the power of God and the discerning spirit and you have a heart that forgive each other, you see, if the heart is bungled up, then God cannot work with that. God need clearance and God need a heart that is pure and clean and ready for the master's use. So if the heart is tied up and bundled up, then you need a release. Brother Joe, Brother Joe done me something. Something pretty obvious. And I looked at him, I, I held him for 10 years, 20 years. And I never pause to
to check myself and said, I really want to worship, but each time when I try to get up, I just come in back down. Church, we must understand and check ourselves. Some of us may operate that everything is all right. It's not because there are hindrances to your ability to rise up. But each time you make that attempt, something holding you back. You need to free yourself. If you want freedom in the spirit, you need to check yourself. Oh, bless the Lord today. First Peter 4 and 8 teaches, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. Why I say love? And why I'm, I'm heading that direction? Is that when the love of God centralized and when it take over, then it's easy to deal with each other with the love of God. It's easy to forgive and walk away. It's easy to hug your sister, your brother, and look them in the eyes and say, I hurt you. But look at me now. Forgive me. Clear yourself. It's up to the sister or the brother if they want to still hold you. Make right. Make peace. This is the house of God. Hallelujah. Love covers a multitude of sin. Proverbs 10, 12 speak to us today. Hatred store up strife, but love covers all offenses. Living a life of love is the best way to move beyond pain of the past, past hurt. You did me something, but I still hold you. And you have some folks, I forgive you, but I don't forget. That may be practical. But is that something you should glory into? As time goes by, if the forgiveness is genuine, then that way you never sometimes remember what you did to me. And what I did to you. Because you forgive. Church, we are people of God. But we have an adversary that track us. Amen. And the adversary that track us is Satan. And if you give Satan a foothold, then he will take more than a foothold. And he will come right in. Satan will have church with you. I let you feel like this is good church. Oh, you're quiet. You don't not he come and he clap, tambourine and do everything. Oh Lord. Oh my God. And it felt good. And you come and you speak in tongues and you said I'm on the right track. Good God. Brother Norman, you may understand some things in life, sir. And you may have a track coming from within life. But every move in life you make, you realize that you cannot do it on your own. None of us as Christians can do it on our own. We need Jesus. Every minute, every hour, we need him. We need him. We cannot walk unless he's holding our hands. The mountain is so high and the valley is so low. We need Jesus. You think I can get up and just I say, oh, I forgive you. With my own one truck. Mine. Thank you. Not in my strength. But everything must done under the demonstration of the spirit. 
Because the Spirit of God come in to teach us how to live and to let us understand what the Word said and to show us a better part of life. Now, if the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, then automatically you become the sons of God. And we can live and enjoy the Christian life because God lives there. God don't lie. God don't cheat. God don't hate. But when the spirit come in. Into this flesh body. Change up what was there. Change up what you were born with. When he changed that thing. And placed his spirit in there. Then we think different. Because this. Spirit of sin that we inherit. Many of us remember Cain kill Abel. You hear me? That was bad spirit. That was the spirit of Satan. Amen. But look on us today as children of God. When we come together, we must care for each other. The Bible is almost tarry one for another. That's where we put it. Stay with each other. Love on each other. Stand with each other. Worship together. Have the right attitude. Because love covers. It covers my bad ways. If you treat me right with the love of God, it will help me. You hear me? If you treat me right with God's love in you, it will help me to see myself. Because you're going to treat me right. You're going to show me something different. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We have unresolved issue. This is the danger part. Never dealt with. And it stays around for a long time. And it become a part of you. So you don't fully even identify it. Say you are living with unresolved issue. You don't even see it anymore. Because everything become a norm. It just come in one fold with you. You feel good about it. Because you never dealt with it right. That's why these days it's hard when we speak to somebody and ask them to come to church and to get saved. When we can't do it, we grumble and we quarrel and say that's a pastor's job and we can't save them and Paul plant and Apollos water and the whole set of that. But when you live the Christian life and you leave out that equation of it. The, 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 the forgiveness and forgive. Because Jesus said, if you forgive, you will free yourself. Amen. But if you live with unforgiveness, it will hold you at ransom. And your glory cannot be fertile or it cannot be good. Your glory would be false. Hallelujah. We also have forgiven our debtors. Realize forgiveness is connected with our spiritual maturity. If we grow in Christ, as the word said, grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are growing in grace and you are moving on the king's highway, then that means there's nothing there. The whole order is clean. The vessel is clean. Ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must be mature Christian. 10, 20 years, 25, 30 years, it's, it's about time for you to get mature. Amen. We must be willing to forgive others following his example as he has forgiven, setting a model for our own lives. Keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude. My God in heaven. Psalms 103 verse 12 said, Far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed. Come on now. If your transgression be removed, your sin being removed, it's easy for me to look at you and say, we don't talk. We never shake hands for many years. I have a, a problem with you. Every time you speak to me, it's contention. We never see eye to eye. We are having a, a problem. We need to get it solved. When you speak like that, that shows to us that you are moving up. So it's quite important that we must check around to see who is among us that we don't associate with. And that I'm having a problem because Every time you listen, Sister Mary and Brother John, you say, oh, Lord, he had to go up there. Pastor had to put him up there. I don't want to hear he or she. You got a problem there. And if the church is like that, well, not this church. Then you need to rethink again. I think everybody should find the altar. Because the Bible said there is no good in us. It's just the mercy of Almighty God. All our righteousness. That's why you need God's spirit. And you need God in your life. To make us much better than who we are. When we love each other. Then forgiveness is easy. That's the way how you conquer it. I'm not killing anyone. That's why it takes you so long to do it. Because you just found out that I didn't do it. But I was against this person. The person didn't hurt you, but you just turn against the person. And you never said nothing good about the person. You have some folks say easy to jump on a bus when they are not invited. Do you hear me? Hey, Brother Harris is killing the pastor. Somebody else look on it and say, I love that opportunity. I've been waiting for that. I joined them. Forgiveness. Love and forgiveness. Amen. Ephesians 1, 7, I'm coming down. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to his grace. Isaiah 1 uh, and verse 8 conclude. He said, come now. Let us reason together. It's reasoning time. When you come to the altar, you come to talk to the Lord. Come, let us reason this out. Let's get to the bottom of this. Because I need to get this thing away from me. It's like a person who is demon possessed. Never happy. Always operate so, so way off. Contrary. But when you get rid of that demon's attack, you get freedom. 
and everything look different and oper you operate different. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But let us, church, let us reason together. Said the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as well. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as well. Time to reason. Because there are times we forget that we have this here. Everybody have a heart. Things go on in the heart. It come in the mind first, and when it's standing for too long, it gets in here. Amen. So what we need to do is to check the heart. The heart will check it and see what is still there because your heart is like you have a corner. And you store things in there. You put some, you tie it up, you put it to this corner. That can stay there. I'm not letting that go. You tie up another knot and you put it on the other side and say, that can stay there. I, I still want to hold on this. But the Bible says, behold, your secret sin shall find you out. We are dealing with human beings. Every one of us sitting here, we are human beings. We are people and we are subject to the wrong things. We are subject to fail. But because of the love of God that constrain us and keep us on the fiery line, we can say to God, be the glory. You better understand who you are. Know who you are. Amen. And know how you relate to each other. The Bible said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Fix it. If you don't get the mic to preach or to lead or to do something spectacular in the house of God, make certain that your heart is right. God not coming and say, I'm glad you were preaching today. No way. What he comes for is a ready heart. So don't kill yourself for this. Amen. The heart must be right. That when I stand in front of you and I face you and look you in the eyes, you don't have to tell me some subliminal things. You will relate to me right. Talk to me with sense and understanding. Because we are God's people and this is the house of God. It's the pillar and ground of the truth. We can fix this thought. You said you dare not trust your own. We can fix it. Amen. I don't want to be so quiet today. Amen. But come and let us reason. Talk to the Lord. And sometimes, you know, church, as we deal with forgiveness, it's better for you to meet with the person before you go pray. Amen. You don't have to ask the Lord, I, I want to go for you talk to this person, ask him to forgive me, but how should I approach that? It's a word. It's best to meet with the person and talk it over with the person and said, I really did hurt you. I, I really did. And sometimes we hurt people even in our own house. And they hurt you too. And when somebody hurts you, you start to develop something that is not normal. You start to defend, be defensive against the person. 
And then when you start doing that, something else come in. This hatred is not easy. It's a demons. And that's the first thing that rises up. How do you deal with it? Do you battle with it or do you rebuke it? Amen. So if we want to have the church, the church to rejoice and people to soar to heights, then we need to, when we come in, we need to check the heart. If we need freedom and healing and restoration and deliverance, we need to check ourselves. Amen. And guess what? It begins from up here to down there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The word of God will put any one of us right. Let me be a little practical. I'm coming down. A man may hurt a woman to the extent that the woman said, this is it. Any chance I get, I'm going to get rid of him. It's not a bad hurt. And you live with it. That unhurt. And it stays there until one is at the east and one is at the west. It never rectify. Amen. But we need to rectify if you're a child of God, you need to pray a different prayer now. Touch my stony heart. Help me, Lord, that I will do what is right. Because every one of us, as child of God, we must do right. You think God loves bitterness and God don't live in those things. It's I and you live in those things. God is pure and clean and holy and righteous. But we hold. At time we hold. And then the hurtful part is that today you see me and tomorrow you say, my God, he really gone. Death will come unexpectedly. Death will come when you don't think. Healthy person die. So we have to be careful. We only see today. Don't let nobody tell you that tomorrow is a must. Nothing like that. That's why Jesus said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Jesus deals with today. And when he's coming back, he's going to come at a certain day. That's how he works. There's no possibility for tomorrow. Tomorrow the sun may never shine for me. But I have the opportunity today to make it right with God and with my sisters and my brother. Because church, we are God's children. We are royal priesthood. We are holy nation. We are peculiar people. We are not any and anything. We are bought with a prize. We must glorify God. Live above sin. Ask God to sanctify your mouth. Because the mouth is an escape route. Because that's where everything pronounced. It makes to say almost anything. But be careful. Be careful, church. Live for the Lord. Stand where Jesus placed you. If you are in this church, shine. Shine. Shine on the outside. Shine in the inside. Let somebody see the Christ of God in you. The Bible said must be an example of the believer. Amen. Church, we are called at such a time as this. It's a crucial ending we are on. 
We are on a defining time that none of us can even understand what's going on. The prediction is that by the end of this year sometime, we're going to have darkness, no light. It's possible. Some of us don't believe that. Some of us don't want to hear about the last days, nor stuff like that, because we believe we were placed here forever. No way. As hard as the time is getting because economic decline is on us. You work more, less, and spend more. Things in the grocery stores are not like two years ago and last year. Things are going up. Something is about to happen. Famine is about to enter. You can't stop it. Some of the prayers that you're praying, me as well, you pray for your children and your husband. Leave that. Because that had to happen. God allow it. Because it's the last days. Lord, don't make no war. I don't pray that way. I'm sorry. That was already talked about in scripture. Because Jesus said, when you see it, look up. When you see wars and rumors of wars and killing and fighting, the Bible tells us that in the last days you will see these things. Use wisdom. Pray for your children. Pray for yourself. Pray for your neighbor. And leave the external things. That's what you need to do. With a heart of forgiveness. Worship God freely. I will praise your Lord. Stand with me. I want us to sing this song. I just don't want to praise and worship only. I will praise your Lord with every breath that I can take. You had to make a difference to somebody. Don't wait on them to make a difference to you. You must make a difference to somebody. Amen. Because if you live that way, you may not end up too good. And you cannot be a child of God and sweetly say, and on your way to glory, and that's your life. God is not Mark. Whatever a man sow, well, you see, you know scriptures. That's what it is. Let us do this little song together. And in the meantime you do it, you turn the searchlight on yourself. Look in your heart. Because you can look in your heart, you know. Look down in there. And see what lies there for so long that never been dealt with. Free yourself that you can worship better. And you can get results when you worship because when you pray for healing, you're not getting no result. You're not getting no healing until you give up. You don't even want to pray for the sick. You don't even want to visit the sick no more. Oh, God. Sing this song. I will praise you, Lord, with every, with breath. every breath that I take. I will praise you, Lord, this promise I made. And if eternity ends and starts all over again, even then I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you. I will I praise will you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. This promise I made. Oh God. And if eternity ends and starts all over again, even, even then, then I will praise I you. Will praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Even then, Amen. I will praise the Lord. It is so fitting and right to come and join me here as you wished. Please come. Let us come and stand at the altar. Show something. You may not be the recipient of the message, but come. Pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. Pray for somebody. We may not have that among us, but pray that it don't happen here. Amen. 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 Please come. Show solidarity. Show togetherness. We call for prayer. Come. Come. Don't say I'm better and it's not me. And that wasn't for me. That's a selfie way. You are in self when you talk like that. That's not even good. Come and show freedom, togetherness, love and harmony and oneness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want us all where you're standing to talk to the Lord. If you want to pray silently, go ahead. Just for a minute, let's talk to the Lord. Father, how great is our God. How great is his name. He is the greatest one. Forever the same. Almighty eternal father. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The God who loved us unconditionally. The God who looked beyond our fault. And saw our need. Oh we come to you this hour. With our brokenness with our frustration, and we place everything at the foot of the cross today. God, we know the burden that we bear. You are greater than them all. We are asking your God to move upon your people, to touch your people, to bring us, God, in togetherness as we humble to you. Burn out carnality. Burn out sin. Wash and cleanse. Oh God. Keep us near the cross. Support us. Set us our heart on fire. Lead us to the rock that is higher than I. Oh let us be a blessing to each other. Let us keep loving each other. Love without being partial. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our cry. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for blessings. Touch those that are, 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 are pretty much down. Touch those that are weak. Oh, God, your word declare that let the strong bear the infirmity of the weak. Whatever your people is struggling with, cannot get it right. Create God of glory. Transform their lives today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, turn that searchlight on me. If there is anything within that is not in line with your word, Lord, forgive me. Create within me. A clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Restore the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me. I humble to you today. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. <laughs>